appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's KVA, where we're going to be talking about different reuse strategy, design reuse strategies inside a vault, inside an inventor, and maybe even a little extra stuff for you, too. So, um, so everybody should know me by now. If you're new to the KVAs, um, my name is Tom Fitzgerald. I'm a senior technical solutions executive. Been with Kitty for just over two years now. Um, previously, worked at Autodesk for 10 years as a solution architect, implementation consultant, technical consultant, business consultant, doing various roles, really engaging with customers within the manufacturing space around how they can do things better, not just within engineering, but more from a process perspective, integrated systems, uh, different technologies um, that we here at Kativ can support you with. Um, have over 25 years design experience, 3D design experience, using all sorts of different CAD applications, been within the manufacturing space for over 30 years in various roles as a, uh, uh, not just within engineering, but also working as a, uh, a welder fabricator at some point, uh, working in a, on a, in a machine shop. So a lot of experience working with manufacturing tools and understanding the processes there, there within. <clears throat> Um, I'm also a U.S. Army veteran and a World War II historian. That's what I do in my free time. All right. So today we want to talk about um, reuse strategies. So I have three bullet points here uh, talking about what we can do around reusing designs within the context of Vault, reusing designs within the context of Inventor, and then maybe even a manual copy process that we want to talk about just to kind of give you a sense of the different options you have available to you. Now, whichever one you choose to pick is, is up to you, but I want you to understand, you know, some of the intricacies that are involved with reusing different designs, okay? Um, so even though we're going to be talking about Vault and Inventor, uh, guys, if you have some other CAD application that you're using, be it AutoCAD or SolidWorks, I'm sure there's comparable functionality within those applications. Really, we want to focus on the principles of uh, reusing information as opposed to the exact buttons that you need to push uh, in order to accomplish those types of things. So bear in mind, all right? So why do we want to, why do we want to reuse information? Uh, I've worked with many co companies out there, guys, that have taken on this concept or this idea of we want to keep um, data sets to different products projects, customers, isolated from one another, meaning the information in which they use to develop their products for a customer um, is isolated and contained and unique. And in a lot of instances, they're not reusing any information. Um, they're applying different file names and properties to these different files and keeping them, like I said before, isolated and controlled for that particular customer. Now, if your um, industry or if your process demands that, then obviously maybe this isn't the KVA for you. However, there's still ways that you can reuse information. And a lot of that information has to do with typically information that you um, don't have design control over, uh, information in which you rely upon a vendor to provide. You're not controlling that design. You're not modifying or editing that design. You're simply consuming that information. I mean, that's a prime example of where you would want to reuse information from one project to another, one product to another, one customer to another, however you have your information organized, okay? So why should we reuse, and, uh, reuse data? Well, because it's a single source of truth. I mean, that's a big one right there, right? Why have a quarter 20 fastener three inches long um, that is, you have 20 copies of that throughout your entire environment. Um, what if for some reason you need to go and change, uh, say, a stock number, just a simple property value to that quarter 20 volt? Maybe the vendor where you get it from, McMaster Car or wherever, it has one uh, stock number, but you have an internal stock number that you need to control. Well, if for some reason you go through, a, you know, a systems change or uh, you change your naming convention uh, to your stock numbers or you maybe get acquired by a company or you acquire a different company, there's always instances where information needs to change. Now, if you had 20 of those quarter 20 bolts lying around there in your environment, which one do you use? 
which one to update. Uh, you want to make sure that that information is consistent and accurate. One of the biggest problems companies face today is around their data, meaning how do I find the data that I need rapidly enough so that way it's not interrupting my productivity? And then, of course, how do I ensure that I have a high level of confidence that what it is that I do find is exactly what I need? And duplication and redundancy is a big problem in that regard. So maintaining that single source of truth, maintaining that information to understand, you know, uh, where I need to find my information. Another real reason is why recreate if you don't need to? Why recreate the wheel? If you already have something out in a, a system or in your environment that you can consume, being able to find it rapidly, being able to consume it rapidly is really what it's all about, as opposed to finding something that's close and then um, manipulating in such a way to arrive at, at the configuration in which you need. So um, understanding your hierarchy or folder organization or file organization to be able to find that information. Um, another real reason, if you're constantly copying entire designs and you're keeping that information isolated, um, whatever system you may be using to control your data, be it Vault, be it PLM, be it some other system, even if it's just Windows Explorer, you're going to be bloating your information. You're going to have more information, information that you actually need. So if you're using a system like Vault that is dependent upon a database, well, now you're, in, you're increasing the size of the database, which is impacting not just performance of your system, but also the maintenance of the system. Think about those administrators that might have to maintain that database. You know, it could have impacts there as well. And then of course, the big one, uh, another big one rather, is workflow efficiencies. If you are constantly copying and recreating that wheel, you're not as productive as you could be. Um, by instituting a reuse strategy and developing and, and folding that into your workflow will make you more productive uh, and more efficient in terms of how engineering operates. Okay, so these are some of the reasons and why you want to develop a reuse strategy. Okay? So the first one we're going to talk about today is um, using uh, copy design within Vault. So some of the uh, big things that you want to know about uh, copy design in Vault is number one, copy design inside of Vault Professional versus Vault Basic is somewhat different from one another, and that really has to do with the fact that. Vault Pro uh, gives you categories, gives you life cycles, gives you revision management and things like that, where Vault Basic does not. Vault Basic is essentially a repository, check in, check out, property information, and that's about it, right? So just keep in mind, if you're using Vault Basic, what you're seeing today may not directly apply, but once again, the principles are still the same. Um, Copy design within Vault is a modeless interface. When what this means is once you activate the tool, you know you can minimize that that uh, that uh, user interface, and you can conduct other activities within Vault. Say, for instance, you have a large design, and you want to copy some of that information. You want to reuse some of that information. Maybe it takes you ten minutes to go through that entire exercise of copying that design. Well, as as we all know, there's always somebody that's going to come up and interrupt you and ask you to do something. Oh, can you just take care of this real quick? You don't have to exit out of your copy design in order to do other activities inside of the vault. You can just minimize that screen, do those other activities, come back, pick up where you left off, and now you're on your way. So just keep in mind that it's modeless. And quite honestly, it's really easy to use. And I'm going to demonstrate that here in just a second. All right, so let me pop over to vault here. So we can take a look at uh, what's going on. So I'm using Vault uh, Professional 2024, and I have a, a very simple data set here to kind of demonstrate what this all looks like. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can access copy design. I can right click within the context of my upper window pane here, and I can go down here and I can say copy design. So I have a button right here. I can also um, select copy design up here on my toolbar. So I have a, another way of accessing it there. And I'm pretty sure that uh, there's probably some other action right here. Exactly. So I can access it. Uh, maybe I can access it through there. Anyway, so right click. I have a right, right, right click interface where I can access. It. I have the toolbar. Um, once I go into copy design, I'm going to get uh, a, a window here that's going to allow me to then 
define how I want this design to be copied. And the things that we need to be most concerned about, right, is um, in this case, you know, my upper level assembly, obviously I'm going to want to copy that. So if I simply right click here, I can define that to as uh, to be copy. In this right click menu, you're going to notice there's a couple of other things here, like copy branch, copy, exclude, reuse, copy to. So these are the things that we want to focus on primarily right here is copy, exclude, and reuse, okay? So I can set this to copy, at which point, once I define that as being copied, this is going to be the name. I can come in here. I can change this to whatever I need it to be. Remember, this is just a file name, okay? It has nothing to do with any other properties at this point. It's just file name. Where do I want to copy this to? Right? Um, if there's a location within uh, Vault, I have another folder structure already available. I can then go in and, and define where that's going to be copied to. Um, if there's any revision involved, uh, states, um, categories, lifecycle states, that's all going to be here as well, as well as what action that I'm actually conducting here. Okay. So copy. Now, if I want to reuse um, any additional information, the default, whenever you do copy, is to do a reuse. You have to explicitly tell something that you want to copy it, okay? So in this case, if I select copy on, say, this, um, this fence right here, you're going to notice now that says copy. If I say I want to reuse my beam here, you'll notice nothing happened. It's not indicating that I'm reusing it. The default state in copy design is just to reuse, okay? So you have to dictate what explicitly you want to copy. Because if we think about it, in most instances, if we think about our workflows, a lot of the time, we, uh, in particular the manufacturing, if there's a deviation in the design, it's typically rather um, specific. I, I need to change out this motor. I need to change out that bolt. I need to change out, you know, this angle iron or something along those lines. But in a lot of cases, you know, 60, 70, 80% of the design is exactly the same as something that existed previously. So because the vast majority already exists, we want to reuse some of that. Um, and then if we want to copy everything, right? So if we want to copy everything, I can just use the control button, right click, select, say copy. And now I've bulk identified all the files here as set to copy, okay? So if you are in that environment where you want to keep everything isolated. You don't want to reuse. You're just going to copy. Copy design inside of the vault is still a great tool to use in that in that capacity as well. Okay. So some of the things that are happening over here on the right window pane, you'll notice that as I'm say doing different things here, um, it's identifying what's being copied. So this over here on the right hand side is primarily for information. So it's feeding information to you as to. What does my folder structure look like? Um, if I want to um, identify as what's being copied, what's being reused, what's being replaced, this is giving me information so that way I can understand what's going on. The left window pane is where we want to do our actions. The right window pane here is just feeding back information so I can make an educated decision here, okay? And the last button here on the right is uh, my my file naming or my numbering here. So if I have a prefix or a suffix, um, my base name, I can apply all that here as necessary and update this information. Okay. Um, so left side is where we do a lot of our actions. Right side is uh, information being fed back. Once I go and uh, execute on this, so execute copy, then it's going to go through that process. If you're in an instance where you want to say, I only want to copy my upper level assembly, um, but the, the, the design that I want to copy includes additional information, you know, maybe a, a, an additional motor in this case of a conveyor, or um, maybe some sort of a discharge chute or something along those lines. Well, I can add files to this design. And then just like within the normal search functionality of being able to find information inside of the vault, you know, I can browse and I can do a search and I can find the information that I want to include into this design and then um, open that. And then it's going to uh, be a part of this design that I can then copy over into my new destination. Okay. 
Um, so find and replace works in that capacity as well. Layout here just shows, uh, gives me different ways of looking at my information. But for the, the vast majority of what you're going to be doing within copy design is identifying files that you want to copy, identify files that you want to reuse, identifying files that you want to include and or exclude. Okay, so that's the primary thing here. Um, there is uh, an option to do uh, a rule set, and rule sets to really have to do with how property information gets passed around. So you can define different rule sets to understand more around how you want to update different property information. Okay. So that's really primarily what copy design does. So the tool inside of the vault environment that allows you to take information that's existing inside of the vault. Right? So this is information that's inside of the vault that you're want, going to want to copy. And a lot of this activity here has to do with um, updating the database. So it's creating new database index, uh, indexes as to what the new files are. And then, of course, in the background, it's copying those files over. Now, of course, because they're just copied, there's been no editing to these files whatsoever. So short of a file name or maybe some other property information that might have been updated, the files are in the exact same state as they were from their source, whatever you use to copy from. So once you do that copy, of course, you're going to want to check out those files, open it up in your appropriate authoring application, be it Inventor, AutoCAD, um, Word, Microsoft Word even, right? And then go through that process of updating those files, checking them back into the vault, and that kind of round trips your whole process right there, okay? So that's the vault environment in terms of copy design. Now, what about if you're, what about a couple of instances? What if you're using vault, but you're really do a lot of your activity inside of Inventor? Very rarely are you going into the vault. Um, there's ways that you can do a lot of the same things outside of the vault using Inventor, okay? Um, so one of the things, that uh, or these three bullet points really kind of stand out in terms of um, when you use the inventor save and replace functionality, which we're going to get into in just a second, you have a lot more visibility as to the copy process. You're easy, you're identifying, visually identifying those files that you want to copy, and you have a lot more control over dictating which files you want to copy and replace. Okay. Um, this is done right inside of the inventor environment. Um, and if you have vault naming schemes set up in vault and you're logged into the vault from inventor, you can still leverage the vault naming scheme. So um, you can still rely upon vault to ensure that you're naming your files appropriately and you're adhering to any standards that you may have relative to naming conventions. Okay. So let's go over to inventor here real quick so I can kind of show you what that looks like. So Vault copy design, we're doing all of our activity inside of the vault, and then we're checking it out and modifying it with the context within the context of the inventor. This is the opposite. Here, we're inside of inventor. We have a design open. However, this isn't the design that I want to deliver to my customer. I want to, I want to modify this. I want to make it available to modify. So one of the things that we can do um, here is to within your productivity tab here, right? Productivity. So on your assemble tab, the productivity panel, you're going to get this drop down where you can create derived substitutes. You can add parts, uh, place component, rename browser nodes. But one of the tools here is called save and replace. And by selecting save and replace without having anything else selected within your, your window here, um, I can then highlight or hover over what it is that I want to replace or copy and, and replace, save and replace. Okay. So as I hover it over it, you're going to notice that it, it highlights within my graphics window. You're also going to notice on my model browser on the left hand side there that the appropriate um, component or instance occurrence in this in this case is also highlighted. Okay. And I can select from my model browser as well. And as I hover over different components within my model browser, you're going to see that they highlight within my graphics window. So very easy to use in terms of visualizing what it is that I want to copy. In this case, maybe I want to switch out a motor. Okay. Um, if this motor already exists, obviously, you're just going to do component replace. You're going to browse out and replace it. Right. If this motor does not exist, so I want to copy it, 
And then I'm going to manipulate or modify it to suit the needs of the particular customer. Um, in this case, then what I can do is I can go into, um, it's going to ask me, where do I want to copy this to? I'm just going to browse to the folder that I want to copy it to. Uh, in this case, it's going to be new conveyor, new conveyor parts. And then I'm just going to call this, um, I'll give it a new name instead of 100, maybe we're going to call this 120. Okay. And now I've copied it and it's asking me, wait, this conveyor is not checked out from the vault. So I'm, I'm logged into the vault. So I still have all my normal vault activities here. So I'm just going to tell it to yes, yes to all. And now I have all that information available to me. So what this is saying is, do I want to save this configuration before I replace this component? Because I'm deleting one and adding another, right? So how do I know anything happened? Well, my dialog box has went away, number one. And if I right-click on that motor and go to my properties, I'm going to see that this is now my new file name, okay? So I've saved, a, a copy the file, saved it to a node location, and it automatically did the copy replace for me. Now, anybody who's used Inventor before and has done copy design, you know that if you're if you're doing copies of a, of a component that is already uh, constrained within the context of an assembly, 99.9% .9 of the time, those constraints automatically apply. And you don't get any of those broken references or broken relationships that we sometimes see if, if we build files independent from one another, right? In our minds, we think, oh, yeah, I did this exactly the same way as the previous one, but we're all human. Sometimes we miss a step. Sometimes we do something slightly different. Inventor understands those things. So um, developing a design and then copying a design to manipulate it ensures that you know, our assembly constraints, our work features, the different things that are necessary for us to appropriately develop our configurations all are maintained and we have a high level of confidence that it's all going to work out. Okay. So I now have my new engine or my new motor here. If I right click, I can open my motor and then I can make my design changes as necessary. If I need to update um, some dimensions or whatever, then I'm good to go. Knowing that I'm not going to impact the previous motor, also noticing that I'm not going to be impacting the current design in which I'm copying from. So my there's two things that you could have done here. We could have done a save copy as of the original assembly, or at this point, I can do a save copy as. Because I haven't saved this, I can do a save copy as, as a new uh, um, uh, conveyor assembly with the new motor in it without impacting some of that previous information. Once I do that, of course, now I have a whole new assembly with, an, with a motor. It's reusing some of the information, other information, right? Some of the standard information in terms of the, the supports and the conveyor, reusing all of that. And now I'll be able to then now take that and put it into the vault. And you'll notice that once I go to my vault tab here, I have a new file. It's telling me I got to check it in. It hasn't been created. It doesn't exist inside of the vault. Now I can check it in, and then I'll have the new motor inside of the vault as well. Okay. So copy design inside of the vault. We're doing all our activities inside of the vault. We check it out and make our changes. In this way, we're already outside of the vault. We're in our authoring tool. We're copying the information we need, and then we're going to push it up into the vault. So two different ways of arriving at the same destination. It really depends on where are you most comfortable at, what are your strengths, but from a from a um, from a standards and a workflow perspective, like I said before, you're arriving at the same destination. Okay, now this methodology works really good. Um, it's very easy to use, but I would say this: if you have very very large designs, maybe this isn't the best method, um, only because it's. It's hard to keep track of what have you copied, what didn't you copy, unless you're going back and forth between model and vault. Oh, I, I changed the engine here. Maybe I got to change something else. So you just want to make sure that you're going through the process of understanding what has changed, what is being reused before you commit to anything like checking it into the vault. If, of course, you do that, you can always delete it. If you have those permissions, if you have that kind of role, you can always change it later on. But just Make sure that you're double checking everything before you commit to put it in inside of the vault, right? All right, so that takes care of the vault side of things and the inventor side of things. What about this other way? So let me go back over here to my PowerPoint. 
So um, copy design in Vault, save and replace inside of Inventor. The other way to do it is a manual copy process. So another different, another strategy you can use if you're using Vault, I highly encourage you to use copy design. If you use an Inventor in Vault, use either the Inventor uh, process or the, the Vault process. If you're not using Vault and you're just using Inventor, I, I recommend using the save and replace um, workflow. But if you wanna do it manually, this is the way that you can do it. But like I said, not the preferred method, limited copy uh, visibility, and there's no interface to allow you to guide you through this process. But essentially, what, you, what you're doing is if you have components that are coming out of the Vault, like this is my inventor demo assembly. If I right click, um, if I right click on, whoop, let me go back here. If I right click on this assembly and I go to properties, I'm going to notice that um, if this file was checked into the vault and I had a copy local on my machine, this read only flag would be checked. Okay. Which means I couldn't copy it. Well, I could copy it. I just couldn't modify it, right? So you could e essentially right click and do a copy. And then, you know, uh, you could then go back here to my new conveyor folder here, right click, paste, right? So I have my new file. I wanna give it a, a, a new name because I wanna make sure that it's not of the same name as a previous one. Now, because the fact that it lives in a different folder, you could have duplicate names, right? We've seen that before within Windows Explorer. However, not a practice you want to get into if you're using Vault, right? Duplicate information, we don't want to do that if we can avoid it as much as we possibly can. So making sure you have a, a different name for it, even though it's in a different folder, is always good practice, right? Once I have that, um, if, if I, I copied it, now I can open it up inside of Inventor. This is my new assembly. Um, I'm just going to select this um, because I have some duplicate information apparently. So now this is my new assembly here, at which point I can go through the same process if I wanted to go over here to Windows Explorer and go back over to my conveyor. And maybe I want to um, not the maybe the engine, maybe I want a new engine and I'm going to copy this one and go back over to my new conveyor folder and new conveyor parts. And I already have the 120 in there, but I'm gonna paste this one in and I want this to say maybe, oh, I don't wanna open it. I wanna go and I wanna change that name real quick. I'm just gonna add a new on there just to make it different, right? And now I can open up, make my changes. So as you can see, working outside of Windows Explorer, copying files, giving them new names, putting in new places, or outside of Vault and outside of Inventor in Windows Explorer, rather. Um, you can do it. It's just harder to keep track, not as user-friendly, uh, prone to making mistakes. However, you can function that way in order to copy the information you need, and then, of course, reuse um, other information that you don't want to recreate the wheel, okay? So going back over here to my PowerPoint, I go back over here to my PowerPoint, here we go. So in summary, basically there's many different ways that you can institute a design reuse or a, a, a data reuse strategy, right? Copy, vault copy design is the preferred method. You got a nice little interface, you can see everything, you can update property information, you can apply, apply pre, uh, prefixes and suffixes, you got a lot of functionality in terms of including or excluding files from your design. Definitely the preferred method. If you're not using Vault, I highly encourage you to look at it, get it implemented within your environment. It's going to save you a lot of time, guys, I, I assure you. The second thing, uh, Inventor Save and Replace. Uh, very functional. You got you know graphical information that you can rely upon to make your decisions. Um, relatively easy to use to save copy as, component replace, save and replace. So definitely a secondary methodology you can leverage in order to copy and reuse information. And then, of course, the last one is a manual copy process. Definitely not the best method. Like I said, prone to mistakes, really hard to keep track of things. But if you're not using Vault, that, you know, obviously that is the way that you want to do it. Making sure that 
you have a good file naming convention and a folder structure will go a long way as well, guys. Okay. So you want to define your method. And of course, once you have your workflow and your methodology defined, make sure you're incorporating this into your standards. I can't stress this enough. I get on more and more calls with customers that say, oh yeah, we have a standard. Um, you know, this individual over here or this group of individuals over there, they're the ones that are, are managing that. I'm like, do you have any documentation? Do you have any workflow diagrams? Is there any information that somebody that new comes on board can leverage and lean on to understand what your process is as opposed to having to constantly, you know, interrogate or ask questions from another individual to understand those types of things. So ramping up individuals, new people on board, always a good thing, right? The, the faster they can hit the ground running, the better off you guys are. So once you've defined your reuse strategy, make sure you're incorporated in, into your design standards. And then of course, why have a reuse strategy? Well, because you want clean, high performing data, because this is essentially what makes you more productive, right? Being able to find the information you need when you need it with a high level of confidence that it's accurate, that's the goal of, of um, really using data effectively and efficiently within our engineering processes. Okay. So let's go ahead and, oh, that's my 32 minutes. Let's go ahead and open up for some Q&A, Christina, and see what we can do to answer any questions here. Sure, we have a few questions in the Q&A. Um, the first is from Eric. It says, if a component, particularly an assembly, is accidentally reused and you need to change it, what is the process to copy that component after you do a copy design on an assembly? Mm. Right. So what I showed you was copy design and I had selected an, an assembly, right, to copy. Now, um, if you accidentally selected a component to do reuse, uh, just go to that that component that uh, you reuse, go to the, the original, and you can do copy design just on an individual file. You don't have to worry about file relationships. And that way, copy design of that component, identify where you the destination path, give a file name, open up the, um, the copy design inside of Inventor. And because you've copied a new component that was originally identified as reuse, it's existing in the vault. So then you can just Check that out or get the latest version of that, do a component replace, and now you're on your way. So no worries there. Just follow the same process of copying the information that you need, opening up the appropriate uh, design, the assembly, doing a component replace, and you're on your way. Second question. As um, frame component structures are a little confusing in copy design, also tube and pipe. Any copy flow suggestions? Oh, yeah. I was afraid somebody was going to bring this up. So when it comes to routed systems, you know, like tube and pipe, frame generator, um, those things can be a little bit challenging because of the way, like take frame generator as an example. When we... Uh, when, when, when we develop frames in frame generator, right, we go through this process of having to apply very specific file names to them. Um, in a lot of instances, we're copying everything from a frame because the potentiality that, say, an end treatment might be slightly different, material might be different from member to member, things along those lines. So um, I, <laughs> yeah, copy design within, say, like, tube and pipe and frame generator is always going to be a challenge in terms of the of best practices. Um, and it's going to kind of vary from company to company. Um, if you're using frame gen, a lot of the cases, you're almost better off just, you know, creating a, a new design every time as opposed to copying a frame gen and then manipulating a frame gen design. In a lot of instances, it's better just to start uh, a frame, or if you if you're using a lot of static stuff, or perhaps even, um, and I've seen this a number of times. Say you have a lot of frames of using frame generator or pipe runs in tube and pipe. A lot of the time, they're going to be similar in foundation, but as you evolve the design, that's where the variables start coming in. 
So if you can understand where that baseline is, that boilerplate design might be, take your frame gen and, and then do that much of it. And then from there, you have a foundation, a basis. Maybe it's 20, 30, 50% complete. And then you need to add that last bit to it. That's probably a better way of doing it than starting from scratch every single time. So essentially developing uh, foundational templates in order to facilitate that process. Third question. So this is our last question from Eric. It says, wouldn't you use Design Assistant from Windows Explorer to do a copy design? Uh, yeah, you could use Design Assistant. That's probably a, a, another way of, of, of doing it as opposed to doing the manual method. Um, or if you're not using Vault to not use uh, copy design in, in Vault. But Design Assistant, yeah, I mean, that's, that is a, a good tool to use as well because it's out of the box inventor. Um, I've never been a big fan of Design Assistant. Um, I think it's it was one of the original design reuse um, functions that were implement or that was made available to work with inventor file associations. Um, however, over the years, I mean, I've seen a lot of people struggle with it and not be very happy with its its uh, uh, usability. It's not very user friendly. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a, a, another method that you could institute in terms of uh, a reuse strategy. But once again, copy design inside of the vaults, save and replace inside of Inventor. Those are the two best methods that you could use. Very good call, Eric. Great. Well, it all looks right. like those are all of our questions. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, my pleasure. And guys, as if you have any questions at any point, go ahead, call our support line, shoot us an email, reach out to me, be more than happy to uh, provide as much insight as I possibly can about all sorts of different things that we do here at Katib, not just about Vault and not just about Inventor. Great. Thank you so much for joining everyone. And we'll see you guys all next week. Thanks, Tom.